guys, welcome to Tribe TV. Today we're going to be talking about Paris' burning. Before there was a Pose or a RuPaul's Drag Race, there was Paris' burning. Like many others, my infatuation with the underground ball culture started with this documentary. Paris' burning exposed the golden age of New York City drag ball, magnifying the good and the bad within the communities involved in a very raw fashion. Now, if you guys have never seen this movie, Netflix has been streaming it for some time. You should definitely check it out because there may be some spoilers in this video. Today, we're mainly going to be focusing on what happened after the filming. The first person we'll be focusing on is Pepper LaBeja. LaBeja was known as the last remaining queen of the Harlem drag balls. Around 1981, she became the mother of the house of LaBeja and remained a house mother for the following 20 years. I've been a man and I've been a man who emulated a woman. I've never been a woman. Shortly after the filming of Paris is Burning, LaBeja's partner Pamela Jackson passed away. She suffered from type 2 diabetes and had both feet amputated as a result. On May 14, 2003, LaBeja died of a heart attack only at the age of 54. Because right about now, this next 40 or so years that I'm gonna be here, I'm gonna live. One of the most memorable people in Paris is Burning would have to be Venus Extravaganza. Venus was invited to join the House of Extravaganza in 1983. At the time of filming Paris is Burning, Extravaganza was only 23 years old and an aspiring model. The thing that helped me make my most money through the escort service is being that I'm so little, I'm so petite. In the documentary, Venus describes a time she narrowly escaped an attack by a man who discovered she was transgender. It was possible that her murder actually occurred in the same type of situation. During filming, Extravaganza was found dead under the bed at a Duchess Hotel in New York. As of 2019, her killer has not been found. In 2013, a New York City theater group displayed a murder mystery play centered around Venus's murder. Members of the House of Extravaganza condemned the work. They said it was inappropriate, opportunistic, and very disrespectful to Venus's legacy. I want to be a professional model behind cameras in a high fashion world. I want this. This is what I want. They did pay homage to Venus in the show Pose on multiple plot lines and multiple sub characters. Octavia St. Laurent was another main figure of the documentary with her stunning looks and fashion sense. And I felt that I wanted to be the best I could be. The Virginia Slims girl is here. This was not a game for me or fun. This is something that I want to live. After Paris is Burning in 1993, she had a role in The Saint of Fort Washington and Octavia St. Laurent, Queen of the Underground. In 2005, Octavia was a host on the TV award show, The Pill Awards. The next year, she starred in Wolfgang Busch's How Do I Look? How do you explain how other people have then seen Paris is Burning as because something good? Because they're looking good. outside in, and anything that gay people do, first of all, is a bunch of entertainment. Paris is Burning is like their, their motto or something. They don't know anything about the gay community or ball scenes. So how do you feel about Paris is Burning? <laughs> It's a terrible movie. This film is sometimes dubbed as the sequel to Paris is Burning, but we're gonna get a little bit into that later. She was using the name Heavenly Angel, Octavia St. Laurent Manolo Blatnique. Okay, <laughs> it's a mouthful. In the documentary, she discussed her drug use, sex work, and fight with AIDS. In 2008, she was diagnosed with cancer. Octavia passed away on May 17, 2009 after a long battle with cancer. Only reason why they keep girls like me in the closet is because I'll change everyone's way of thinking about our lifestyle. Personally, I think homosexuals are the most creative, intelligent, and the most social people out there. Yes, we make mistakes, but <laughs> they make mistakes too. Willie Ninja was an American dancer and choreographer best known as the godfather of voguing. Paris's burning catapulted Ninja's career. He parlayed his appearance into performance with a number of dance tropes and choreography gigs. His house disbanded in 1988, despite the attempt in the following year. The house still remains disbanded. Within the same year of the attempt, Ninja starred in the music video for Malcolm McLaren's song, Deep in Vogue. Madonna released her hit Vogue a year later. Ninja danced in two of Janet Jackson's music videos from her album, Rhythm Nation 1814. Ninja also appeared in the 2006 How Do I Look follow-up documentary. How Do I Look was a film that chronicles ball culture in Harlem and Philadelphia over a 10 year period. The documentary was an empowerment project to help the people in the ballroom community after the poor reputation they felt was gained with the release of the documentary, Paris is Burning. As an activist, uh, I, I use How Do I Look as a tool to uh, break down these stereotypes and create empowerment projects to help individuals or an entire community. Paris is Burning um, 
exploited the ball community and a lot of people in the community were upset with Paris is burning. I felt that she took advantage of all of us. All of us, you know? But I didn't benefit nothing out of it. I worked with Jenny Livingston fervently, you know, making them comfortable, doing a lot of different things when they were filming um, Paris is Burning. And um, she came and she filmed me, but she wanted to know who the thieves were. She was an all-white crew. And she was coming to Harlem on an adventure like that, and she was well-received. People respected her and liked her and treated her well. In the brochure, Paris was burning was advertised, a film about prostitutes, welfare recipients, and messengers. That's what was actually wrote up in the brochure advertising Paris is Burning, and it was by Liv Jenny Livingston. That's when I, would, I, I really had a thing against her. So how do you feel about Paris is Burning? <laughs> it's a terrible movie. I think you, Wolfgang, are giving us the opportunity to speak out, to talk more about what the kids did then, what are they doing now, and what we could give the gay community and the straight community, you know, for them to see something different that Jenny Livingston did not show. As you can see, a lot of people were not happy with this project as time went on. The film follows Willie Ninja, Kevin Ultra Omni, Octavia St. Laurent, Pepper LaBeja, and Jose Extravaganza. Unfortunately, Ninja died of an AIDS-related heart failure the same year How Do I Look was released. You can get more with creativity, which that's the positive side, of the ballroom scene and the houses than you do with the self-destructiveness or just being outright destructive to other people. Speaking of extravaganza, Angie Extravaganza was a founding member and the mother of the House of Extravaganza. The House of Extravaganza was the first primarily Latino house within New York's gay ballroom scene. It was almost 10 years old when the documentary was released. Angie passed three years after the filming from an AIDS-related liver disease. She was only 28 years old. Three weeks after her death, the New York Times published an article on the ball scene. A large photo of Angie Extravaganza was on the front page of the Sunday Style section titled Paris Has Burned. The year following her death, Junior Vasquez released a house music single titled X, in dedication to the memory of Angie Extravaganza. The record remains a popular club anthem today. House of Extravaganza also still remains an active part of the New York City's gay ballroom, nightlife, and cultural scene. The house of Extravaganza, mother of the year, keeping her children intact. And we have Angie Extravaganza. Paris Dupree was the founding member and mother of the legendary House of Dupree. Let's play. Let's play. Let's play. Let's play. Paris is credited as one of the pioneers of voguing, and it was because of her that the art form is called Vogue. Paris is also credited as being the inventor of the competition categories. Not much is public about Paris's life after Paris is burning. There are pictures floating around online of Paris prior to her passing. Paris did eventually pass away in August of 2011, and she was 61 years old. Again, not much information was put out about the cause of death or anything leading up to the death. The person with the most shocking post-film reveal was Dorian Corey. On August 29th, 1993, Corey died of AIDS-related complications. She was only 56 years old. Her cremated remains were sent back to Buffalo, New York, but were unclaimed. After her death, a body was discovered in her apartment. Investigators determined the body had been dead for almost 15 years. The body was preserved in an old suitcase hidden in a closet. Robert Worley, aka Robert Wells, was the victim. A gunshot to the head was ruled the cause of death. No one knows for sure why Dorian had this body. Speculations include he was an abusive ex-lover, she murdered him in self-defense, domestic violence, or it was a potential burglary gone wrong. Season 2 of Pose pays homage to Dorian in the third episode when Electra discovers one of her clients has died from an overdose. She knew that the cops would not believe the circumstances of the death based on who she is, who he is, as well as her profession. She hid the body in a trunk and concealed it in her closet. The producer and director of Pose confirmed that writer Our Lady J based the plot of the episode on Dorian. Shade is... I don't tell you you're ugly, but I don't have to tell you because you know you're ugly. 
and that's Shay. I wanted to save this for last because a lot of people have their own theories as to what happened to the two kids. One of the most memorable scenes of Paris is Burning is when we're briefly introduced to two boys hanging out on the streets of New York City at 2 a.m. Some people speculated they were prostitutes. Others assume they were runaways. There are tons and tons of theories online about the boy's story. However, I stumbled across a YouTube video titled Paris is Burning the Two Kids and a pinned comment is someone claiming to be the kid in blue. I am the kid in blue. I am very much alive. I never joined a house by choice, but if I had a choice, I would choose the extravaganza. Angie and I were very close. She was there for me many nights. I never became a drag queen, and yes, I did get adopted. No, my father never was a trick, and yes, I had never my bot with the fast life. As you can see, it hasn't beaten me. I beat it because I had to choose to live. The streets are quiet, but only for one minute if you don't die in that time. For so long, I have been a face without a name. My first real name is Anthony. My friends call me Justice. Maybe one day, before I kick the bucket, the extravaganzas will make me an honorary child at that house. If this movie helped at least one person, then it was worth it. Jenny Livingston did her thing. Thanks to everyone who kept me alive and thought and prayer. Now, this may or may not be the boy in the video. There's no solid proof. However, it was confirmed that in the director's commentary on the Paris is Burning DVD, that one of the boys did in fact get adopted and went to college. Could it be a coincidence? And also, as you guys could see with a lot of people that were involved with Paris is Burning, they didn't really care for that director too much. So maybe this is the only person on the cast that actually didn't have bad blood with that director. Mm, I don't know, just more theories. Another theory is that the kid in blue is actually Ido Ninja from the House of Ninja. Some say Ido Ninja confirmed this on his Instagram that he is in fact the boy in blue. But again, these are all theories. In the years following the film's release, people have continued to speak and write about Paris is Burning. The documentary changed the lives of everyone involved, not just the cast members, but the people who were alive at the time actually living in the environment 